Hello. I'm over here in uh, Centrilla, Illinois. Had a early morning unload. These huge big paper rolls. And I'm going to go ahead and take me a 34 hour reset to try to. I'm kind of fatigued. Been been a long, stressful week. Uh, and I'm trying to get my reset back to where uh, it's over the weekend anyway. Because when I got to orientation at this company, they say their drivers are usually on resets on the weekend, which I haven't been since I've been here. So I'm trying to get around that. Plus, I'm fatigued. I'm kind of fatigued anyway. A little tired at to get up early uh when you got to make a spot parking and the drivers keep knocking on your door to get you to move so they can get out uh it kind of disrupts your sleep so my sleep got disrupted down there in texas though i'm a, a day runner anyway so i was able to get on up but uh kind of fatigued behind that so they over here getting me unloaded but this video is going to be i'm going to keep you up to date with the attitudes of the dispatch here at this company i'm at after the issue I had that they totally blew out of proportion and exaggerated about my behavior and, and being aggressive and being mean and not nice. So, after the conflict, that's what this one is about, how they start treating you. Well, they was already starting to do some little stuff before the issues, but I think they did it to cause the issue. So now, what does dispatch do after the conflict? Every driver probably has experienced this. The minute, I don't know, I think dispatchers, fleet managers, uh, have some type of creed but amongst themselves that when a driver comes in there and end up mouthing off at them or complaining at them or complaining about anything, the lows or not wanting to do something or something, they have this little... Uh, the thing they do, they spread the driver's name amongst all the dispatchers. And so, and then they start when you're trying to call in, you have mysteriously not able to get your dispatcher on the phone. And other dispatchers are calling in because they want you to start talking to other dispatchers. And then next thing you know, you done went all over the dispatch office. And then when thing when when it, when it comes down to the end, because they, what they're doing is trying to force you out, get you out or cause some reason for you to leave or have a reason for them to say you need to leave. So, they spread you around the dispatch office. And this was unbelievable to find out that they do that. I'm like, is this in there? Is this part of their work work ethic? Is this what you're supposed to do? Okay, you do something to a driver that a driver don't like or a driver's complaining about something. So, instead of you resolving the issue professionally like your job entails, I don't care what the, what the condition the driver is, me, I already know. To be prepared, if I was a dispatcher, I already know to be prepared for a driver possibly calling in, mad as hell about something, yelling, screaming. Okay, I'm your dispatcher. Okay, I'm the go-between. What's wrong? That's me. But not these dispatchers. Not these planners. Not these people you talk to at these fleet companies. Once you start calling in, I raid and your voice raised and they, they talking about they don't like it. They they turn into, I don't know. They the ones get mean and not being nice. Start playing games with your loads, sending you around and all this other bullshit. So, and I don't know why they do that because it's not part of their job. See, because I, I, I see myself as a totally different dispatcher. You can call in screaming, yelling all the hell you want. I don't care. Especially if you on my board. You my driver. What the hell wrong? I got a driver calling in complaining. What the problem is and who the fuck did it? That's the way I see things. But these planners here, these these dispatchers here, they don't see that. They take it personally and they want you to do what they want you to do. When they want you to do it. And then they get attitudes if you don't do it. They think uh, no force dispatch means force dispatch. So, let me tell you what happened just now. Now... Yesterday, I was feeling a little fatigued. Uh, I told you, I said I was going to stick with the company for a minute because they agreed to change dispatchers. And I was supposed to got a call yesterday from dispatcher. Never happened. See, this is what they do. The games they play. Where's the call? Who's the dispatcher? I don't know who the dispatcher is. This, this is what you do. But you expect drivers to tolerate your nonsense. And then when I speak out against your nonsense, then you trying to get rid of me. I said, but you constantly doing the nonsense. Okay, you said my new dispatcher was going to get in contact with you. You ain't even got a call. 
Just shoot me a message so I know who you are, so I know who to contact. Give me your extension number if I need to call you. But at this point, behind what they're doing now, I already know what phase it is. This is get ready to leave phase. It's something either they're going to do to talk about what you need to win. You might as well bring the truck back or something. I'm going to make a decision of based off what they're doing, because that's the standstill point we're at right now. We, we had halfway mark. They already fucked up. So that's where we're at. But when you don't do what you say you're going to do, OK, you just pull the chain to dispatcher. OK, now I got 26 hours left on my clock. But mind you, yesterday, I'm feeling fatigued and I already feel it. I need to go ahead and just shit the truck down at truck stop. Give me a reset in to get my get myself caught back up. So I already messaged him. But before I messaged him, that was late last night. Before I messaged him, I never heard from the new dispatcher. And on top of that, he never, they supposed to plan you over the weekend. Didn't happen. So I just called into the dispatch over the weekend. I said, uh, I'm down here in central Illinois because I was trying to get up to Morton where the uh, terminal is to do the reset. Uh, so I said, uh, I don't want to just dead head up there because that's about almost three hours from where I am. So I said, well, let me call and see if maybe they got a load I could pick up and just drop at the yard for somebody else to take on. He, the, 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 whoever this is answering for dispatch said, no. Ain't no loads here. You're going to have to wait till Monday. I got 26 hours on my clock. Why I got to wait till Monday? Then he said, I said, I was trying to get up to Morton to do my reset. You know what he said? He said, I don't want you to come to Morton. That's what the dispatcher said. He don't want me to come to Morton. So I told him, it's not about where you want me to come to do my reset. It's where I want to come to do my reset. And I said, if I was going to try to get up to Morton, I said, well, let me check to see if maybe you had a load here. I could pick up from some, for a driver, drop at the yard, and I'm going to do my reset up there in Morton. He said, no, we don't have a load. Uh, you're going to have to wait to Monday. Uh, get with your dispatcher. I said, well, I don't know who he is yet. They changed the dispatcher. He hasn't contacted me. I said, well, I was calling myself instead of just trying to deadhead up there, which I'm not going to do anyway, because that's over 170 miles. Uh, but to get up to Morton, if you had a load, uh, see if it was something you had to pick up here. So I'm seeing what they're starting to do already. So you was just going to sit me around. What you're doing, another thing I don't like the dispatcher do, they look at your miles that you made and then determine when they're going to sit you around. They determine you made enough. No, I'll tell you when I made enough. I got 26 hours on my clock. Before they left on Friday, they're supposed to have their drivers planned over the weekend. So the attitude is already starting. See what it is? They don't like drivers questioning their authority. They can't handle it. They start retaliating. Just like when my truck was put in the shop to get that tire off. I'm finding mechanic grease marks in the truck. Fingerprints back there in the sleeper area. I'm going to clean this whole truck all in the, in the fabric the best I could. Uh, up over me in my little cubby hole up there. A black grease line straight across the fabric. That wasn't in there. See, this is what they do. When uh they got a driver in there, they question their authority. They get your vehicle in there and close the door so you can't see be going all in your shit, fucking with your shit, fucking up your damn truck. And I don't know why you hire people to do this damn shit. So what? I had a disagreement. So what? I had to say something to you. It was something that needed to be said and it got said. But evidently, they copped an attitude with it. So I'm going to keep you up to date with the progress here at this company because the attitudes has already started. You're not going to be talking to me. Uh, about what you don't want me to do. See, that's where you're wrong. He should have never said that. That should have never came in his mouth. No, I don't want you to come to Morton. See, that's controlling. I'm lease purchase. What do you mean, no, you don't want me to come to Morton? I come wherever I want to come for my reset. I was just trying to be nice to see if you had a load that maybe I could possibly drop up at the yard instead of just deadheading off of 170 miles with nothing but an empty trailer. But, Stay tuned. I'm going to keep you up to date with the progress. This is going to be uh, dispatcher's behavior after the driver's conflict. This is what this video is. You need to monitor how they're treating you after and then you proceed accordingly. Because if they start getting too ridiculous with their nonsense, you can either hang in there to another altercation happen 
Or you go ahead and bounce and let them know, hey, I'm not going to tolerate this damn shit. Hey, you want to do shit to get me out of here? I can go ahead and go. That means you ain't got no money for me to be here in the first damn place. I'm too good a driver to be dealing with y'all talking this goddamn bullshit. You better recognize what you have here and get your fleet dispatchers and planners. All you get, they on, get them on the same page and tell them to stop doing that goddamn nonsense. All of them up in there doing the same thing. Why do you get an attitude because somebody questioned your damn authority? I mean, you told me some bullshit. They act like drivers are not supposed to have any kind of say-so at the bullshit they doing to them. I mean, you done lost your goddamn mind. And then after the driver have a say-so, I don't care if you call up the irate or mean, the motherfuckers cop attitudes. See, i fire you. If I owned a company of trucks and I had a office of dispatchers like this, and I catch any one of them doing this, talking to a driver like that, Tell them you can't uh come here just because they asked you a question. You don't like the sound of their voice, so you're going to make up. You're going to exaggerate the situation. All they was doing is asking you a question. It sounds like they caught you in some bullshit. And now you sitting up there copping the attitude and thinking you're going to lay the law down because you're controlling their loads. You're too controlling here at this company. And then your dispatchers are your, your, your shop, all of y'all. Why are you playing games? Why are you doing this little childish ass shit? And you talking about selling your trucks. Don't nobody want no truck that your mechanic's going around putting grease and shit all in that we can't get out. It wasn't in there when I got the damn truck. Every time it get pulled in the shop, it's coming out with something else wrong. Don't nobody want to buy no shit like that. And I don't want to have to be responsible for trying to clean that shit out after they put that motherfucking shit in there. I'm not your maid behind your damn shops. That shit don't make no damn sense. Cop an attitude because he got caught in telling me something wrong. Oh, would you get an attitude if I bring the Federal Motor Carrier with me or have him on the phone, on speakerphone when you tell me that shit? Cop an attitude at him then. Since you want to get one at me, maybe you need somebody with more authority than you to straighten out your fucking attitude. Because I'm tired of these dispatchers and planners do what they do to these damn drivers. You want to call them, you, 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 Watch the board, how much miles they make. You determining how many miles you're going to get them for the week. Not what they want for the week. What they can do for the week. You send up there counting their miles. Well, you ain't got enough. You see, we ain't got to give them nothing. Sit them around when they when they get an altercation or their voice raised or they done said something out the way you don't got them like. That's not part of your job description. And you shouldn't even be a dispatcher or a planner doing that goddamn shit at a fleet company. Because you two are the main reason these drivers be leaving. The main reason the drivers leave is because of something going on with the dispatch and the planning of the damn loads. All the time. If I own the fleet company, this shit y'all doing here, I tell, I hear you misinformed a driver, did something to try to get them a ticket, told them something that would get them a ticket, or you sitting them around on purpose because that driver said something to you, then you didn't like them questioning you, your authority, uh, and they really had a reason to because you was telling them some bullshit and I hear you did it. You be fired. You come back from your break with a pink slip on your goddamn desk. Clean your desk out. I'm going to put a nice little note on it. I heard you tell that driver something wrong. I heard you cop attitude with that driver. I understand the driver had an attitude. You're the you're his dispatcher. He's on your board. Your job is to, to get past the attitude, find out what the hell is wrong and resolve the problem. Not cop an attitude, then you round here whispering amongst your other co-workers about the driver, not answering the phone, passing them along to other dispatchers so it can be more and more conflict. i fire you. If I was boss for a day, I would fire you. Be careful now, don't think you can't get fired. Ta-ta now. Watch y'all attitudes, planners and dispatchers. Don't cop one with me. I ain't the one.